your breast for time. We're going to look into God's Word. I want to turn your attention to Philippians. Verse 6 and 7. Philippians chapter 4, 6 and 7. I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. My Father, we are grateful to you this night. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together. What a privilege, Father, to seek your face in the last few minutes of this year, Father. Lord, we yield our life to you. We want to hear from your word. We pray that you will speak into our lives. Every resistance to the preaching of God's word, we bind them in Jesus' name. Every critical spirit be stilled, and I pray that God's name will be exalted. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. As the word reminds us, they overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. So be it in the house this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Tonight's message is titled, It's Settled. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Looking back, did you ever had a day, a week, a season of being plagued by worry or you were anxious about something? The scripture addresses Worry as God's word speaks into the lives of his children. Apostle Paul writing to the church writes, Don't worry about anything. The Bible has a lots of do's and don'ts. Praise the Lord. Sometimes when we read the don'ts, we might not like it. But this is a good don't. Don't worry. Praise the Lord. We see that even Jesus addressed this matter when he was teaching. Praise God. Think about worrying. As you are seated right here tonight, is there anything in your mind, in your thought? Right now, here, that you're worried about. Think about it for a second. And if we were to take an inventory of our lives, would you be able to pinpoint that particular matter, issue, event, episode in your life? And looking back, were you able to resolve it? Or have you carried it here and getting ready, knowingly, unknowingly, subconsciously, ready to transfer it into next year? Well, God's word addresses it and says, do not. Don't worry about anything. As human beings, everyone has a tendency to worry. The ignorant, they worry that they don't know enough. The informed, they worry about what they know. Some people think ignorance is a bliss because you don't know. But ignorance can be at times costly. Rich worry that they will lose 
what they have or what they have earned. The poor always worry that they don't have enough. The elderly worry about what's awaiting them. The young, they worry about what's going to happen with life. Parents worry about their children. You think the children worry about their parents? What do you think, children? What do you think, parents? You think your children worry about you? I think there are some who worry about their parents. Well, take care of them. This way you don't have to worry about them. Praise the Lord. Both ways, okay? Yes. Think about parents worry about their children. Couples who don't have children, they worry that they don't have one. And if you're a single, a bachelor, the single always worry, who are they going to, hmm? who are they going to get married to? Anybody with that worry tonight? Well, I want to tell you about some other group that worries something else. Some who are married, they worry thinking why they ever got married. Anybody like that? Pinch your spouse if he or she is around. And make sure it's not a hard pinch. People have lots of thoughts Worries that plague them. Some of them are very trivial. Some of them are real issues of life. That's the reason the Bible addresses it. And it's very important to realize that it's a command. Don't worry about anything. Praise the Lord. A 95-year-old grandma was in a nursing home. And one of the church members decided to visit the grandma. Elderly people love a visit from church members. And I believe that we have a lot of elderly people in our church. They're not in any nursing homes, but they are in their homes. It will be good if we can visit them at least once in a while and just simply spend few moments with them. You will see that they would love it. I know our young people did some ministry like that. It's very important. This 95-year-old grandma was visited by one of the believers in the church. The believer inquired about her well-being. Looking, her, looking at her, he thought that she looks worried and was wondering what was worrying her? Ask grandma, grandma, are you okay? She said, I'm okay. Is the food okay here? Yeah, the food is okay. How about your stay? The stay is okay, but you look worried. She said, yes, I am worried sick. And so the, the brother asked, what is it that you're worried about? Leaning back, she took a deep sigh, and this is what she said. She shared her major worry. And do you know what worried her the most? Every close friend I ever had has died and gone to heaven. I am afraid they all are wondering where I went. See, as we pass through different phases in life, what plagues us and what worries us are very different. If you are in midlife, what worries you may not worry the younger ones that are coming up. The elderly, what they are going through, what bothers them, what they are anxious about, you might think that's trivial. But everyone has some kind of anxiety or the other. Praise God. It's based on what you are going through in your life. But the scripture addresses it saying, 
Don't worry about anything. What do you think anything comprises of? What is inclusive of anything? Do you think that there is anything excluded from anything? So tonight, the very thing that you are worried about, that you are anxious about, I want you to put that in the bucket, a bucket with the tag that says anything. One version says, don't worry about nothing. And you put that thing in that bucket and you look at it and you say, the scripture says, don't worry about anything. Well, we might think it's easier said than done. That's true. But this is the living word of God. And when you take it into consideration, the settings, who wrote it and when. It's written, penned by Apostle Paul. And he was not in a resort. He was not in a mountaintop experience. He was not overlooking the sea seated on a mountaintop willow. But he was where? Prison. Writing from the prison is saying, don't worry about anything. Praise God. Hallelujah. Is it possible? Is it possible? Is it humanly possible? Well, if the Bible says you and I are expected to rise up to that level. If you and I were to get a command from the Lord saying, do not worry about anything and would leave us there as is, we would be lost. But the scripture says, what is it that we can do as we are preparing to enter into a new year rather than carrying the worry burdens with us into the new year, whatever it is that is bugging you. It might be reality. It might be something, a thought in your mind or something that's not even real. What is it the scripture says? See, when everything is working out fine for us, it's easy to say these things and read these things out and just go away. But when we are faced with issues in life, that's when God expects us to activate the word of God that is happening applicable to us in that season. Life consists of different seasons. Every day might not be a smooth sailing in our lives. Some matters in life are very legitimate. And it might be a matter of concern. But the scripture says, regardless of what it is, how serious it is, how trivial it is, how real it is, or just something, something simply that is in your mind, don't worry about anything. Praise the Lord. The Greek word that is given there and its meaning goes like this to be pulled in different directions have you ever experienced that pull to be pulled in different directions as believers sometimes we have the faith pull yeah we can make it but then there is the fear pull that pulls us the other way and sometimes you are thrown to and fro within, between faith and fear. You come to church, you hear a word, your faith is boosted, but then you step out into reality, fear starts creeping in. If it's not addressed, it starts gripping you, taking a hold of your life. Praise God. 
Have you ever experienced that pull deep down in your heart? Sometimes what happens in our heart, we have mastered the art of covering it up with a straight face, with a smile on our face, with a religious mask. We cover it up very well. Sometimes we shrug it off till we are by ourselves and it bugs us and it bothers us. Praise the Lord. Being pulled from two ends. Barclay puts it like this, and I quote, Jesus is not advocating a shiftless, thriftless, reckless, thoughtless, improvident attitude to life. He is forbidding a careworn, worried fear which takes all the joy out of life, end quote. Think about it. If there is absence of joy this night, as you are ready to venture into a new year, is it anxiety and fear that's lurking in your heart? Praise God. Sometimes, you know, the small things in life, when it is, when it is not addressed, when it is not brought before the Lord, when it is not brought before the altar, it can really take a toll. Praise the Lord. What is the solution that the scripture gives? The Bible says, don't worry about anything. Rather, instead, what do we do? Pray. You know what sound, that sounds so simple. Pray. Praise the Lord. Pray. About what? About what? Everything, everything, things that look small, things that look big. Listen, the scripture tells us instead of worry, pray about everything. I want you to listen to this closely. When you fail to pray, you would wind up paying. Listen, when you fail, pray, you would wind up pain. What does that mean? The solution to the, to the malady of worry and anxiety in the scripture is pray about everything. And sometimes we feel that it's so trivial we don't want to pray. Oh, don't, I don't want to bother God with, with, with something small. Has that crossed your mind? It has crossed my mind. I'll be honest with you. It has crossed my mind. But the scripture says everything. Now, when you don't do that, the small thing has the potential to become big. Praise God. The thing that looked trivial the thing that looks insignificant has the potential to sit there and become big. But the Bible says, bring it to the Lord in prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Prayer refers to communing with God. And when we say prayer, it involves coming in the presence of God and pondering in his presence in adoration and in worship. In other words, when we come with those things that bug us, it's not just walking in and throwing our list and walking away from God, but rather you come in God's presence and think about who he is. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How awesome our God is. How great our God is. How majestic our God is. There is none like him. He is incomparable as a presence, as, as a person. When those thoughts fill your mind, then you realize, hey, there is nothing that he cannot do. 
Praise God. Whether it is small or great. Whether it is something that looks insignificant. Or it has the potential to paralyze your momentum in life. Praise God. Sometimes we use everything before praying. It happened to Hezekiah. What a beautiful example. Hezekiah was faced with a challenge. With an enemy, the Assyrians came. The Assyrians were notoriously known for, for their system. They had invented the system of siege. And they were the ones who invented the system of the battering ram. And these guys came and threatened, you know, the first response of Hezekiah, who was a man of God, was first thing that he did. You know what he tried to do? He tried to pay them off. He tried to pay them off. Then when he realized that it would not work, when the threats in increased. The first round he paid them off and they withdrew for a season. But the enemy came back. See, scripture, scripture, scripture is what we ought to apply in every issues of life if we want a lasting solution. When we try shortcuts, and when we try to do things our own way, it always hits back. The enemy came back again. Till he comes to a point. I'm just summarizing because of the lack of time. Till he came to a point where he goes into the temple of God. Opens the intimidating, threatening letter. And cried out to God. And we see that God intervenes on his behalf. So prayer is coming in the presence of God and acknowledging the greatness of God. And the Bible says, what do you do when you pray? Pray about everything. Our version puts it like this. How is it say? Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Number one, pray about everything. Prayer involves the act of prayer. Prayer involves the atmosphere of prayer. Prayer involves the attitude of prayer. Quite often we have one single act. We just go say what we need to do and walk out of the place. No. We have to move into the realm of the act of prayer. The maintaining an atmosphere of prayer. Meaning we are constantly connected to him praise the Lord and an attitude of prayer praise God pray and the next thing is tell tell God what you need the other version says supplication praise tell God what you need have you told God what you need the very thing that's bugging you have you told God what you need? And thank him for all he has done. Simple. In the past, what he has done would give you muster courage in you to propel forward in life. But you and I can look in the scripture. And in our prayer, we thank God by saying, Father God, I thank you. Because the word of God reminds me when I'm going through a financial issue in my life, that my God shall supply all of my needs according to the riches in glory. And therefore, God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you because I believe that you will supply all of my needs, A-L-L, -L. all of my needs, you will supply. But then God is not just simply confined to the material needs. Our needs comprises of so many other realms in our lives. Praise the Lord. 
praise God. Hmm? Yes? Come and tell him what your needs are. Praise God. Feeling, feeling shaky in faith? Feeling that you're not going to make it in ministry, but you feel that nothing's really happening? You feel doubtful of the very place and where you are in life? Look at the scripture that says, he who has begun a good work in us would do what? He is faithful to do what? To bring it to fruition, to complete it under the day of the Lord Jesus. In other words, God is the initiator and he's a sustainer and he would also do what? He would finish it. Praise God. So as you are thanking God, you think about what he has already done for you. You have not reached this point by your own merits. It is what God has done for you. Praise the Lord. And you believe because the scripture says, he has begun a good work in you. And he will not leave you on the sideways, high and dry, forsaken and forbidden. No, he, regardless of how you feel tonight, the scripture gives us the assurance. And you should give him thanks based on that. Lord, I feel like this. That's okay. It's okay how you feel like that, but don't just sink and be drowned in that feeling. You tell him, Lord, I feel like this, but I believe that you have started a good work in me. And you will carry it through, and you will help me to finish it. Praise the Lord. What kind of a season are you in? Some might be looking for life partners. Hey, the Bible says, he who did not spare his only son with him, would he not also? Praise the Lord. Taking it out of the context, praise the Lord. But what it means is that God did not spare his only son because he loves me. He will go to any extent to provide for my need. Praise God. Do you believe that? Let me just run. Praise God. Thank him. Tell him and thank him. Tell him and thank him. Tell your neighbor, tell him and thank him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Tell him and thank him. Hallelujah. We have so many reasons to give thanks to the Lord. And the Bible says the result is what? The result is we will experience the peace of God. Praise the Lord. Our God is a God of peace, meaning the relationship that we have entered into God through the finished work of Jesus Christ has brought us to a place where we have peace with a holy God. An unholy man, and a holy God could not have peace. But through Jesus Christ, we have reconciled. We've been reconciled. Praise the Lord. And we have peace with God. Only those who have peace with God can experience the peace of God. And tonight, if you have not experienced the peace with God, we beckon you to receive Jesus into your life so that you can experience peace with God. And those who are peace with God can experience the peace of God. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says what kind of a peace it is. It is a peace that surpasseth all understanding. In other words, the external necessarily did not change. There was not an immediate shift in the external. But the peace of God that settles in my mind, it enables me, it guards my heart and my mind in Christ Jesus. When worry 
tries to invade into my life. Praise the Lord. When worry tries to invade into my life, when I come to God in prayer, bringing everything that I have, praise the Lord, and I make him known, his name known, my needs, I tell him and I thank him. The Bible says, the peace of God enters into my system. God's mind and my heart so that this cannot plague me anymore. Praise God. Yes, eventually, yes, there are times God will answer our prayer immediately, but there are times when we have to wait. Praise God. Regardless of what it is, God will give us an inner peace that allows us to overcome the situation. Are you in turmoil tonight? Disturbed? Anxious, worried. Let me tell you. Tell and thank. Come before him with everything that's bugging you tonight. Don't carry that into the next year. The one who sustained you till this moment is faithful to carry you into the next moment. Shall we rise up before the Lord? Praise God. We are getting ready to enter into a new year. I want every one of you to lift up your hands to the Lord. We are going to enter into his presence with praise. We are going to enter into a new year with praise. I want your hearts to be full of hallelujah, thanksgiving. Praise unto God. Give him the praise that is due unto his name. Give him praise Adore him. Hallelujah. Bless the holy name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord of my soul and forget not any of his benefits. What are the benefits? Salvation. Hallelujah. Redemption. Hallelujah. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. Spirit, hallelujah. Praise God. This night, open your mouth, lift up your hands, and give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Those who are filled with the Holy Spirit, speak in tongues and worship God. Clap your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Diva raba sandala raba usha, roka mana si andala raba usha ya. Reke se tenebe, rusha skana hato raja la ba usha mda. Reke tenebe usha mda. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for He is good, for He is good, for He is good. Oh, bless the Lord, Hallelujah. Ramana da rabousham da la rabase kene da rabousha, duba rabasan da la rabousha, ekene da rabousham da la raba, eke saturan da la rabousha, reishas kene he da rabousham da rabousha. Jesus, we bless your name. Jesus, we bless your name. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus.
Jesus, 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 Lord of all, hallelujah, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Keeper, our Sustainer, our Protector, our Provider, our Provision, our Rewarder, our Reward. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you, we praise you this night. Lord, we have entered into a new year with praise. We pray that this entire year will be year of praise. Praise God. That we will praise you for who you are. We will praise you because you are good. We will praise you because there is none like you. We will praise you because you are an awesome God. We pray that we will continue to bless your holy name. Father, we thank you for this new year. We pray that it will not be simply a shift in the number that the 23 has turned into 24 but father we pray this new year you shower us with new grace with new blessings with new anointing with new power with new vision with new perspective with new outlook with new horizon hallelujah we pray, O oh Father, that our love for you will come back to the first love, Lord. That we would have a new love for God like we have never had before. That we would fall in love with God all over again. Father, we pray that we would fall in love with the lover of our soul. Thank you, Jesus. We pray that we would love God and we would love each other. We pray that we would love God and we would love our neighbors. Father, we pray that we will have new experience, new opportunities, new doors will be open for us. New avenues will be open for us. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that we will have new souls. Father, we pray that we will have new mission fields. We pray that we will be empowered with the power of God in such a degree and magnitude that we will say that this year, praise God, it's a new experience. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray that none of us would take you for granted. We always look back, Father, and we always think about the past experience, and we think that God can only work in that way. But this year, I pray that everyone who's hearing this prayer will have a new experience with God. Praise God. Every one of us will have a new experience with God in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you will yank us out of shallow Christianity and take us into a deeper realms in our intimacy with God, in our love and devotion with God in our meditation hallelujah with your word we pray that we will dive into a new depth that we have not experienced before father father we pray that all of our hearts in our hearts and minds will be enlightened to god open our inner eyes so that we may see Jesus as we have never ever seen before. Father, we pray that we will see and behold the beauty of your holiness. Like the three disciples on the Mount Transfiguration, Father, we pray that we will have an experience where we will see the glory of Jesus like we have never experienced before. This new year, Father, we pray that you would give us a 
fresh, dry for God. Praise the Lord. A hunger and a thirst that cannot be pacified with anything else but Jesus and his word. Father, we pray that all of us will stand firm and perfect in all of the will of God. We pray that we will be able to discern and know the will of God concerning our lives, Father. Lead us in the paths of righteousness. Allow us to tread on the highway of holiness. Lead us in the paths of abundance. May this year, hallelujah, Father, I pray that you will crown this year, O oh God, with your goodness and your grace, with your glory. And I pray that we will experience abundance, abundance of life, abundance of provision, abundance of goodness, abundance in every aspect of our lives. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Father, we commit the elderly of this church into your hands. We pray that they will always experience the presence of God. And they will hear the word of God that says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I pray the plague of loneliness will be taken out as they experience God's presence in a fresh wave. Father, we pray this year we will experience the revival of God that we've been praying for. And everyone will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. We pray for young people, oh God. Lord, baptize them with your spirit. Give them new visions, oh God. We pray, oh God, that they will start operating in the gifts of the spirit, oh God. Equip us with your power and your glory, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We pray for our children, Lord. Bless them, Lord. We pray for those who are afflicted and weak. Heal them and empower them, Father. We pray for those who are looking for life mates. We pray that this year, like you did last year, oh Father, that you will meet them at the point of their need and you would lead them to the person of God's choice. Praise God. We pray for those who are barren. Remove barrenness from us. Last year you did, Father. And this new year I pray that you would bless our couples with children of oh God. And they will see the glory and the wonder-working hand of God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise will erupt from the house. Praise will erupt from the families. Praise will erupt from the house of God. Father, we pray that as we minister together, that we will bear each other in the arms of fellowship of Father. And together, we will strive for perfection, O God. In Jesus' name, every plot, every ploy of the enemy be foiled. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Every tongue that riseth against us, hallelujah, judgment, thou shalt condemn it. For this is the heritage of the servants of God. This is by my righteousness, say the Lord of hosts, in Jesus' name. We rebuke every plan of the enemy, every design of the enemy against lives, against young people, against families, against the church of God. We pray it will be foiled in the name of Jesus. There is no wisdom. There is no plan. There is no insight that can succeed against the Lord. Praise God. We cancel every assignment of the enemy against the body of Christ against every member of this church in Jesus' name. Praise God. We pray that the desire of the enemy will not materialize. Only the plan of God will materialize in Jesus' name. Yes, Lord. We proclaim it tonight that there is no wisdom, 
There is no plan. There is no insight that will succeed against the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is no wisdom. There is no plan. There is no insight that can succeed against the Lord. Lord, we thank you. Because we are under the Lordship of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We are under the protection, the umbrella of God's protection, the umbrella of God's provision, under the canopy of God's glory. We belong to you and you alone. Thank you. Thank you. Bless us all together. Lord, we pray that we will continue to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you in advance tonight what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen, amen, amen. Happy New Year. God bless all.